report in. So doing a really quick refresher on Te. Um, later in the chapter, I'll be doing the really comparison Te and To, but now we're just kind of looking at Te again. Um, so Te is basically used when there's normally some kind of relationship between these two, not a cause and effect relationship necessarily, um, though it can be in some way a cause and effect, but normally it can also be like intent based. Um, so for example, it's it's a lot like saying the word so in English. It's just te form, and then you have basically two different sentences on either side of it. Um, how would you say I didn't get any food to eat? So that's taburu mono. Uh, so I was hungry. How would you say that? Taburu mono te ni. I, it, 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 Um, de, ha, um, hara beko, hara beko da. I think this is what you said. I deny. Um, I don't know. That was my goal for this, which is just haidu in um, negative form. So haidu becomes haranai. Haranai. And then nai became kute to make te form. What particle do you think um, taburu mono would get in this context? You think it's going to be o or ga? It's kind of hard in this one. It's going to be o. You would assume it is based off of how I translate the sentence, but it's actually ga because teni haidu doesn't actually insinuate that you went to get food. It kind of more insinuates you stumbled upon the food. And, and that 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 kind of just has to do with how I'm translating the word kind of awfully into English. Why that got that way there would be kind of confusing. So if you were actually like going on your way to get food, it would actually be a different verb here. So it's more just like I didn't stumble upon any food. Or I didn't run into any food. And it's more what this is saying. I didn't run into any food, so I was hungry. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so now we have a new um verb, which is cow. You know what cow means? Oh. It's to purchase. Yes, to purchase. Cow. And our next word is doka. This right here is a very specific word for this book, as this is a copper um coin. So it's the type of money they use in the story. Doka. Top copper coins. Okay, Doka. so what particle do you think this would get? Doka teni hairu. Ga. Yep, ga. Perfect. And do you remember what this kanji is again? Cow, cow. Yep, cow to buy. Perfect. Cow. So I have taberu mono and tabe mono. So these are actually very similar. Tabe mono is literally the word food, right? Tabe mono. Taberu mono is mono with the rel relative clause taberu attached to it. So this is things to eat, things to eat. Or things that I will eat. Hi. Taberu mono. Um, what particle with cow right here, right? What particle is it? Taberu mono, something cow. So to buy food. What particle would we use then? This is a direct verb. So taberu mono o. Yep. Kao. Correct. Yep. Perfect. Taburu mono kao. Nice. So now we're going to be learning tame, which is kind of similar to say. Tame is basically for. So not rather than the fault of something, it's for, but it can also mean because. Um, and which meaning it is is mostly context based. So normally, I... if the sentence is going to end in past tense. The tame is probably going to be because. 
um it, for it to be um four that's more likely to occur for um present tense so the tensing tends to tell us which it is so both of these um I'm going to change this right here uh, real quick so that we have both examples. <laughs> okay, can you read the first sentence for me? Ame no tame ni michi ga tsuberi yatsu kunata. Hi. So this um. means. Because of the rain, the the street um became very slippery, easy to slip on. So that's right there. It's an example of it meaning because. This right here is is the example for four, which could you read this for me? This is Suriho Suru Tame Wakido Dematsu. Right. So in this context, a lot of times this does get pronounced as dull when it's um, with somebody. It's actually pronounced as michi here, being very confusing for us. Waki michi. Waki michi yeah. means um, side street, which is basically the same as an alleyway. So suri o suru tame, waki michi de matsu, means for the purpose of pickpocketing, I, am waiting, I will wait in um, a side street. So whether or not it's because or for is context-based, normally insinuated by the past tense or present tense of the ending. Um, it it can be uh, so, but it doesn't have to be that. So you can have past tense mean for and stuff like that. So um, it, it's just context-based. So if I want to say the sentence, I didn't happen upon any money for buying food. The I didn't happen upon is the teni haidu. I decided to translate that more closely to what it actually is, what, what it's insinuating. Um, money is doka, which is literally copper coins. Buying would be the kao, and food is tabemono. So this is a little hard, but this right here is basically one clause right here for buying food. And the other one is I didn't happen upon any money. So, how would you say for buying food in Japanese? Tabemono o kao tame ni. Yes. Ni. Hi. Mm. And the next is, I didn't happen upon Doka. any money. Hi. Doka ga te ni haranaku de. Haranakte. That's a good guess. Um, you would need to have a, like a. You don't really normally end in te form. Um, so I you could just say hi to nine if you want to. Hi to nine. Which hai. is to not, which is to not happen upon any money in order to buy food. If you want this in past tense form, we would do nakata, right? The na is the past, the ta form of e is kata. So, tabemono o kao tame, doka ga te ni haira na kata, which means um, for buying food, no money reached my hand for that basically okay so our next word is wazuka which is a na adjective wazuka means like a very small amount like minuscule it's kind of like what wazuka means so Waska. hi so let's go read our sentence from the book. Yumeshi ni taberu mono o. I'm sorry. Yumeshi ni taberu mono mo. Tabe mono o 
使うためのわずかなどうかも手に払わなくて腹ペコだ。はい。So right here we have two things attached to mo.You remember what mo tells us? It's the um it's expand um it's expand the topic. So this and also some はい。It, ha it happened to this and it also happened to that. Yes, it is the also. So、um, the thing that these have replaced in these contexts are ga. So, tame no ga, ta,、uh, yume shi ni taburu mono ga, te ni haira nakte, hara peko da. And also, wazuka na doka ga, te ni haira nakte, hara peko da. So, since both of these are true, we decide to go with mo for also. Um, so, what is the first thing that was Tani Hiranak did? Tani Hiranak did was referring to the、um, the、uh, What the, is you mentioning Tabidumono? What is you mentioning Tabidumono mean? The.、Um, Of dinner, at dinner, uh, food, um, dinner, at dinner time, um, the thing to eat. Hi.、Um, so, my biggest thing to notice whenever you're trying to read Japanese, whenever you hit like a clause, always try to do backwards building with it. So, if I went over and said something to eat at dinner, boom, super fast, versus at dinner eating food, doesn't really flow well in English, versus something, that's mono, to eat at dinner, because ni is a time and dinner. This is also why it's taberu mono versus tabe mono, because we're making sure you know that this yu meshi is talking about.、Um, When they're eating, so you can't really say you meshi ni tabe mono mo and all that other stuff because then this you meshi right here would actually be modifying the teni haidu, which means for dinner I didn't get, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad way to translate this, but they're specifically stating that he didn't get any food for dinner and he also didn't get something else. Which, right, what so, else did he not get? Um, Doka mo. Heni hairan nakte. What does Doka mean? Do you remember? He, he did not came upon money. Yes.、Uh, And, coins, actually. Yep, coins. And wasaka just means like a small amount. And he didn't even come across a small amount of coins. For what tame? But for the purpose of buying food. Yep, exactly. So he didn't stumble upon any food for dinner. He also didn't stumble upon even some money that he could use to buy dinner. And because of that, so because that happened, what, what is he feeling right now? Hara pekoda. He's very hungry. He's hungry.、Yes. He's hungry. And with this da right here, we know this is current tense. So,、um, even though earlier we were, so Japanese is really interesting in their storytelling. So, in English, we have to keep the tensing the same. If we're talking about something in the past, we're always in the past. In Japanese, though, once you let us know we're going to be telling a story in the past, we can fully emerge us, ourselves in the story and start telling things as if it's happening in the current tense. So, we're now basically in the actual story and we're no longer like flashbacking to, oh, it was once in a dark, stormy night. Now it's like, oh, yes, I was, I'm hungry because I didn't get any food today. So, we kind of change tenses on us. And that is standard in Japanese, the kind of switching of tensing like this versus, as I said in English, if you read a story, you have to keep the tensing all exactly the same, all throughout the story.、Um, In Japanese, the standard is a little bit different. 
Hi. Um, okay. Yes. I, I like to clarify the verb teni hara, haranakte here. That verb is it um that verb is describing just the um doka just just the coin no. or does it also apply to so both these two particles the right and here the is the particle mo is the word also so it's saying so this is literally saying um things that you could eat for dinner also coins a small amount of coins for the purpose of buying dinner i didn't get any so these two things are both for teni haidu that's why they're using mo here rather than like ga so if you just had um one of these you would probably have ga here right which is the normal particle right. to be like oh i didn't get any food and um Oh, I didn't get any money to buy food. So mo is here specifically for the purpose of listing two items that he did not get. Understood. Got it. Right. And a quick little check. You remember how this guy's read? This is Ame. Perfect. And how about this guy? Michi. Perfect. And this guy? Uh, he yep or he, ka it is he in this context um he. how about this guy um, te -saki. yep te -saki. and lastly what is this part right here perfect yep so yarare do is um a do verb it is the in case you're curious it's um the passive version of yadu which is to do but yada to do insinuates that someone does you in like you get the crap beat out of you you'll be yada yada to do you'll be done in so we do that same thing mm. in english to be done in insinuates somebody you know <laughs> right <laughs> um so yeah, that's that's that verb to be done in. Um, Shimao, I feel like we talked about Shimao, but I was I didn't have enough time to like double check if that showed up. But Shimao kind of means like oh no, and has a completely done type of thing. So this can be used with yadareru to become yadare chao, to mean to be completely done in, which is made by te shi turning into chi. This is yarare te shimau became yarare chao. So what does yarare chao mean? Oh no, I've I I got done in. Exactly. Perfect. That is exactly what that means. And next is koten pan. This is an adverb. Knowing that this is an adverb, do you have any so Adverbs in Japanese are going to end in one of these three things almost all the time. Um, which one of these three things do you think should go over at the end of kotenpan, which means is the adverb for getting the crap beat out of you? Um, since it described verb, I'm guessing ni. Yes, it is ni. Perfect. Yep. So ku shows up if it's an e adjective, we'll turn into ku. And to is what shows up for onomatopoeias. So this guy right here as an adverb takes me. Perfect. What does kotenpan mean? Um, I forgot. You just mentioned it now. It, it, it's basically to get really badly beat up. Badly and, beat up. Yeah. Okay. Can you read this sentence for me? Ore wa kotenpan ni. Yarare chao. What does this mean? Kotenpan. I got really badly beat up. Perfect. Yep. So our next verb is mitsukeru. So right here, I decided to have a comparison with hiro. So hiro and mitsukeru are very similar. As in a way, they can both mean to find something. Mitsukeru and hiro. 
Mitsukeru means that you decided you're going to find something. So you went searching for something and then you found it. So if you say, Mitsukeru, um, just like in this part, it means I will find it. You're making a decision to find something. Hiro means you happened upon it. You're just walking in and you're like, oh, there's something on the floor. I'm going to hiro that. that. Um, literally, hiro tends to be translated as to pick up versus mitsukeru, which is to find. But in general, that's how they're different. If you find something and you weren't looking for it, hiro is what's going to be used. But if you went out of your way to find something, mitsukeru is what's used. So mitsukeru is to find. Um, it does not mean I to search. Does not mean that. Oh, that's the one that I was going to ask you about. Um, so there's that other verb that mean to search, and it had the the little hand character as the shishiraberu, right? So how is that different compared to these two verb to find and to happen upon? So it's a really interesting thing in Japanese. So shiraberu is to search. And if you find information when you're searching, the information you found was mitsukeru. So I'm going to shiraberu, and if you find something, you mitsukeru it. So that's like a really interesting thing. Shiraberu, this kanji, is specifically to do research um, to find something. There's also a different um, shiraberu, shiraberu. Um, that sounds like I can't think about it. Which is to fumble around for. Was it sagasu something? Sagasu, like yes, that's the word. Sagasu. Sagasu. Oh, it's sagasu is also kanji. the search. You're right. This is sagasu. So shirabedu and sagasu both mean to search. Shirabedu is like to search through like information. So if you're Googling something, that's shirabedu. If you're reading a book that to find information, that's shirabedu. Sagasu right. is the physically looking for something, um, like out in the real world. So yeah, that's how those two things. But if you find something when you're sagasuing or shirabeduing, you're gonna say mitsuketa. So I found you're like, it. ah, shirabedu. Yep, exactly. I found it. So yeah, that that's where that comes from. Yeah. Hey. Okay. okay, that's clear. <laughs> so our next verb which we don't we're going to learn a different form of this verb but this is o which means to chase oh oh and this is a super common kanji in this book so i'm going to have you learn the kanji for that soon but first of all Hi. mitsukeru what do you think the ta form of this verb is mitsuketa. Ta. that's a good it's, guess it's a ru verb it is a ru verb so it's just ta rather than ta ta Oh, okay. It's just ta. Mitsuketa. 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 Perfect. To found. Okay. So what? So if I was saying I found a magical stone and we're using mitsuketa, what um particle would we use? <sighs> Mitsuke Mitsukeru is that a direct actions or <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait. Oh, it is. So it's yep. all. <laughs> yep, it is all. Yep. Orewa, madu sakyo mitsuketa. Yep, we use all for that. Perfect. Yeah, I'm. I'm just like cramming this into ya, so you'll never make the mistakes. <laughs> mitsuketa. Okay. Okay. So, do you remember how this is pronounced? Oh. Yep. Oh. Hi. So this shows up in this kanji. Which can you read this word for me? Owarerumi. Hi. Owarerumi is a noun that means to be wanted, like to be a wanted person. This is like person and this is to be wanted. Owarerumi, to be a wanted person. In a negative, it's, like a criminal yeah. sense. Yes, it is negative. No one wants okay. to be wanted this way. Uh, but simply <laughs> it's like to be chased person, a person who is chased. To be chased. <laughs> Um, so I made this confusing, but if, if I'm saying I'm a wanted person, you'd have like wa here. Ore wa o I am a wanted person. Um, if you want to say somebody wants you, that person who wants you would have ni. 
So ori ni owareru mida would mean that is somebody I am wanting. I am search. I'm I I have a I have a wanted notice for. That's a wanted person for me. I... Like if I put the money down. Um. So you know what yatsu means? Yatsu that that. Yeah. That it's guy. That it's thing. That guy. Yatsu. So. That also it works with um, mitsuketa. So if I said yatsu ni ori o mitsuketa, that also means that guy um, found me, is what it is. So you could have mits uh, yatsu wa mitsuketa or yatsu ni mitsuka. In general, the wa is standard. Um, we're going to be using, they're using ni in the next, in the actual line of the book for this. For like a kind of complex reading so we're not really going to go into like why it's doing that but basically they wanted it because they're using me in the previous line and they kind of wanted it to be the same they didn't want to have too many um particles um That's... okay so now we get to finally do our and if and wins kind of so many ways but before that I'm making you learn a new verb because I wasn't very creative with making sentences, which is mogori komu. This means basically to crawl into. Mogori komu. Yeah. Not a super relative word normally, but I just need to do that. Um, and then, do you know what shita I... means? Below. Perfect. Below. So this is a sentence that I have it with shite and um, shi. This she right here is stem form. And this one right here is te form. The sentence is um, jump shite bed no shita ni mogori komu, which is to jump off the bed and crawl underneath the bed. That, that's what that's saying. So both these sentences are grammatically correct. You could say either of these. There's nothing wrong with one sentence versus the other in this. Um, the thing is, why would you use te versus te? Is because of reasoning. Why did the dog jump off the bed in this picture? If she, she jumped off the bed so she could crawl underneath it, because otherwise she can't crawl underneath it. So that's why shite would show up versus just stem form she. So if we just said jump ushi, bed no shita ni mogori komu, it kind of insinuates these two actions kind of happened randomly. There was no real thought process. There's no real correlation. It's just the dog was jumping. At some point, it got underneath the bed as well. Well, right over here, it's more like, hey, they jumped. And then they were like, where I want to go next? I'm going underneath the bed. So there's some kind of game plan going on with shite. Um, Do you know how this kanji is read? Shika. Yeah, she, 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 she why does that sound wrong? Shita, right? Shita. 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 I was like, Shita. Shika, I think, is um deer randomly. <laughs> um, so last last time back when we we're when I skipped this guy had the me version. It was um kawa kara kusunda hairo no ki kiri ga nagare komi roji to yu roji wa ma kurayami. Which is um, flowy. So, sorry, hang on. Sorry here. So, the mist that is gray, basically, the dark mist that is gray came flowing from the river. And the alleyways, all the alleyways were totally, completely dark. There's not really a real correlation between these actions, other than just like perhaps that's why it's dark. But you can't really use te here. Because it's not like this happened and then it became dark necessarily. Like it's kind of saying these two things are still currently happening. <laughs> the, the first action has not ended. That's why you can't really do this. And there's no real like, like the correlation is just like, yes, the reason why it's dark is probably because the fog is in here. But um, you, you can't really say this one. It's, it's grammatically incorrect. Well, contextually incorrect. Um, right. And then right now it's actually our halfway point. So we're going to continue okay. this two seconds. 
Um, and 